Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Everlasting Faith Fellowship. And um, we'll be talking today about a, a new series, and it's, and it's called, Who is the Holy Spirit? All About the Spirit is the name of our series, and over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about all the different aspects of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> But today we're going to talk about who is the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm going to start off today in maybe an unusual story about a police department in Joplin, Missouri. And back in the 90s, they came up with a kind of interesting plan that I've actually seen used in a lot of other municipalities also. <clears throat> Well, they didn't have enough officers to patrol all of the high traffic intersections in their village, so they set up a patrol car, a police car, on the side of the road. There was no officer in it, so they took a mannequin, they put him in the driver's seat, and they dressed him with a police uniform and a police hat. And even though the word got around town, people would still slow down when they came to that intersection and saw the police car sitting on the side of the road with it would look like an officer in it. But you know what? That's not the only time these things happen with artificial things, right? People place artificial plants, right? Inside and outside their homes, fooling many visitors thinking that, boy, they're pretty good at planting. Those plants always look great, not knowing that they're not really real. Then there's fake add-ons or enhancements, right? That a lot of people, maybe especially young ladies or maybe older ladies, due to their bodies, artificial eyelashes and all kind of stuff, right? Something other than what God originally had planned and provided them with, amen? So whether it's in our everyday experiences or in our spiritual lives, Sometimes we're easily fooled by imitations that aren't real. Isn't that a fact, right? And unfortunately, many of us view the Holy Spirit <clears throat> kind of like we view that police officer mannequin in that car, right? And all, a lot of those other fake items that we just talked about. Well, we read about the Holy Spirit in the Bible, and in some sense we believe that he's present in our lives, right? But at the same time, maybe he just doesn't seem quite real to us. And in fact, I have to say that from personal experience that if there's one factor missing in many of our Christian lives, it's the awareness of and the deep relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. So that's the purpose of our new series we're starting today, all about the Holy Spirit. And my goal over the next few weeks is to lead us into a deep and abiding relationship with that Holy Spirit of God, and hopefully it will transform our lives. So in order to begin this, we have to have a good idea of just who the Holy Spirit is, right? And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's start off, number one, with the Holy Spirit is actually God himself part of what we call the Trinity. And it's important to understand that the Holy Spirit is God just as much as Father God, that the Father is God, and that Jesus is also God, all part of the Trinity, working together as the Godhead. They each have different roles to play, but they all are, in fact, God. So when we talk about the Spirit, we're not just talking about God in spirit form, but God, the Holy Spirit, as an individual member of what we refer to as the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is completely and fully God. There's nothing about God the Father <clears throat> or God the Son that's not true about God the Holy Spirit in that respect. So let's look then this morning at a few passages of Scripture together where we'll see the characteristics of God attributed to the Holy Spirit. Now, first thing is that the Spirit is eternal, not just for temporarily around, for all time. So let's turn now to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14. 
And it says, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of who? The eternal, not just temporary, the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. So what is that saying here? Well, first of all, the spirit, he knows all things. He knows all things. Let's go back to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except who? God's own spirit. So what is that saying? Well, the spirit is all-powerful also, right? Don't take my word. Let's go again to the Word of God. Luke 1, verse 35. The angel's talking. He says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. The Spirit is at all places, too. No matter what time, he's there all at all times. We also find that in the Word of God in Psalm 139, verse 7. I can never, what, escape from your spirit, God, right? I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down the grave, you're still there. And the spirit is addressed as God himself. Well, he is God, though, isn't he? Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Peter is speaking. He says, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? He said, you lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. Verse 4. The property was yours to sell or not to sell as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us but to God, because why? The Holy Spirit is with you. He knows your thoughts. He knows when you're lying, right? So God actually is there present with us at all times. We're not hiding anything from God. And we can look at many more passages to demonstrate that the Holy Spirit is presented as holy and completely God. And I think these gave us a good start, right? Now, there's other places in the Bible where the Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of truth <clears throat> or the Spirit of grace or the Spirit of wisdom. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're not talking about <clears throat> an it or a ghost. No, we're talking about the very person of God Almighty himself. The respect and honor that we give to Father God and Jesus, his Son, should also be given to the Spirit of God because they all are one in the same. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Spirit, number two, he is really unique. Unique. What is it when we say something is unique, right? We're actually saying there's something about them that makes them stand apart from anybody else. There are many, many women in the world, right? But my wife is unique in that she's the only one married to me. So even though the Holy Spirit is God in the same way that the Son is and, and the Father are God, the Holy Spirit plays a role in ministry. Now we're going to look at a chart on the screen that I hope will help us out with this a little bit. Notice that on the chart that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. They're all one in the same. <clears throat> and when you look at the outer circle, you'll see that the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Son. No, they are all equally God, but they each have a unique function on their own. <clears throat> Now, you don't have to be an expert on the Trinity, but it would be great if you were, could remember this one basic truth. <clears throat> that
that the Holy Spirit ministers to everybody in a different way than the Father does and a different way than Jesus the Son does. So we could look at a couple of passages that describe all three members of the Godhead and the unique role. So let's start off with the book of Mark, chapter 1, <clears throat> beginning in verse 11. The book of Mark, chapter 1, um, beginning in verse 10, I'm sorry. It says, as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. John 14, verse 26. It says, when the Father sends an advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. These are describing the jobs of the Holy Spirit. And as you can see, they each function in different ways. As, as we need to know the Holy Spirit's function is important because we need to know what his function is in our lives and in particular it is the holy spirit's job to do what to lead people to faith in jesus and also give them the ability to lead a christian life so now let's turn to <clears throat> specific roles that the holy spirit has when he deals with us as christians as humans, right? The Spirit reveals what? The mind of God. <clears throat> Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. It says, as you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now his what? His Spirit has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. The Spirit also gives us the means or the ability to be born again. John 3, verse 5. Jesus said, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the what? And the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life but the holy spirit gives us birth to our spiritual life what else does the spirit do he allows us to approach god the father he allows us to approach god the father let's go to ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 all of us can come to the father through the same what Holy Spirit, because of what Christ has done for us. What else does the Spirit do? It teaches us the truth of God. It teaches us the truth about God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received what? God's spirit, not the world's spirit, but God's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things, right? Because the Holy Spirit knows God, right? So, so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. So if we want to know what God has given to us, we have to accept him as Lord and Savior, and receive the Holy Spirit. Now, there's many more things I could say that about the role of the Spirit, and we would, we'll would be looking about those more as we go along in this series in the weeks to come. But for now, just remember that the Holy Spirit has a unique role in your life, and he also has a unique role in the world itself. So the Holy Spirit, number three, is actually where? He is within you. He is within you. 
not hanging around someplace else. You only see him on church on Sundays. No, he's within you 24-7. In scientific history, there's always a debate over who should get the credit for discovering different things, like, for example, oxygen, right? But regardless of who gets the credit, it's odd to think of a human being as discovering oxygen, right? Does a fish discover water? No. The truth is, oxygen literally surrounds us every day, right? We can't live without it. It's the air we breathe. So the same thing is true about what? The Holy Spirit. He's here. He's real. He's promised to every person who promises to put their trust in Christ. So whether you've recognized his work in your life up to this point is irrelevant. He's a necessary part of your success in leading a Christian life. As they say, there's no ifs, ands about it. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter is speaking. He said, each of you must do what? Repent of your sins, okay? Turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to show that you have received forgiveness of your sins. Now here's the next part that's important. Then, after you do that, right, you will what? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is what? Not just some present or something. It's the Spirit himself. It's going to reside within you. The gift of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit himself. So, we've already acknowledged that the Holy Spirit is fully and completely God. So what does this tell you? If the Holy Spirit lives in you, wow, that means God lives in you also. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God lives within you? If God is with living within you, that means you are the temple because God is living in that temple. So you are the holy temple of God, right? It means you should act in the right way, doesn't it? 1 John 3 and 24. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him and he with them and we know he lives in us why it says because the spirit he gave us lives within us now i don't know about you but knowing that god lives within us should cause us to make some <laughs> radical changes in our life amen because <laughs> if god lives within me wow then i have the power to overcome what every single temptation that is ever thrown at me because I got God here. If he lives within me, I also have the power to love others the same way God loves other people, including myself, right? If God lives within me, I have no excuses when it comes to living the way he wants me to live, right? And there's absolutely nothing that can stop me from becoming the dad, the mom, the husband, the child, the employer, or the employee that he wants me to become. There are no limits to what I can accomplish or become in this life. Glory to God, we should all come to realize that the same God who created this whole universe, the same God who parted the Red Sea, the same God who showed compassion for the masses is the same God who has promised to reside within each and every person who believes in him. Now with that kind of revelation about his presence as part of our lives, we should come to the realization that Paul wasn't kidding. He wasn't jiving when he was talking in Ephesians 3 and 16. And he says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Of course, now we learn that the spirit is in, within us. 
So with God's spirit living within us, we have the power to see, to be, to do, to say, to learn, and to accomplish anything that God wants us to do. Listen, folks, it really comes down to the matter of trusting in the Holy Spirit, not only to see us through, but to lead us to live lives that are successful. Now, over the next few weeks, we'll be talking about the conviction of the Spirit, how He convicts us, and what's the benefit to that. We're going to be talking about the renewal of the Spirit, and we're going to be talking about what it means to be filled with the Spirit. So today we just really wanted to everybody to get to know exactly who the Spirit is. And I believe that if we learn more about the Holy Spirit's ministry and we apply it, those truths to our lives, we'll begin to understand how the Spirit can en enhance our relationship, not only with God, but with everyone, right? So let's pray that we understand what the Spirit is, who He is, what He does, and how it benefits our lives. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for, wow, sending the Holy Spirit, who is really you yourself, Lord, into our, into our lives. We thank you that you've allowed us, through, your, through us accepting you to come into our lives as Lord and Savior, through us confessing our sins to you, Lord, and asking forgiveness that you have given us something that we can't not do on our own, that we can't get on our own, only because of your love for us, that you have given us the presence of your spirit, really of you yourself, to reside within each and every one of us, Lord, to give us power over temptation in this life, and to give us the ability to do what you want us to accomplish in our lives here on this earth. And we pray for those that don't yet have your spirit yet, Lord, that they will come to the recognition of you, Lord, and also the idea that they need to have your spirit within them also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But well, we thank you for joining us today. And those that are viewing the Internet broadcast today, we want to say goodbye to you right now. And we want to let you know that... Uh, we are so happy that you've joined us and we hope that you got a blessing from today's message and that you will let other people know about the Holy Spirit's power so they too can have the Spirit in their lives. Amen and we'll see you next week.